you're fine. You don't have to run. It's okay. So, you know, this year, um, walking through Advent together, um, if you're new to Green Valley, we don't necessarily do Advent. Um, but it's, it's neat to be a part of the church throughout the world. And uh, some churches do what's called liturgical worship, which means that it's set out in advance and it's programmed and so on and so forth. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and so, you know, Advent is very common to many churches and people. Uh, it's not as common here. And we just don't want to get, you know, into a programmed sort of sense. But to join together and to really think about what Christ Mass means and what it brings to us. And, of course, you know, the way that God operates, He operates that way all the time, not just in December. <laughs> okay. So... As we think about it, uh, today is the candle of love, but let's remind ourselves where we start. And you can get different orders with different sort of churches observing uh, Advent. And uh, I chose to start with hope because hope is where we all start, actually. Um, you ever get in a hopeless situation? Do you ever feel hopeless? It's a terrible place. It's called depression. It can be frustration, but it can turn into depression because if you're there longer, it'll, you know. So you don't know this, but Mark was recently in the hospital. And guess what? He got out. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen. Now, I don't know if you've ever cycled through the hospital, okay? But when you're in the hospital and they tell you, you can go home, all right? Now, if you get ready right then, you're probably making a mistake, okay? You want to wait until they actually come with the chair. <laughs> and then, then you'll be ready. I don't know how many times uh, throughout, you know, our history with uh, Sarah's stuff, medical, you know, they'd say, hey, you're going home today. And we get all hopeful and sit there all day. And sometimes actually end up what? Staying and going the next day, you know. Because, uh, you know, but again, so hope. When they tell you, you're going to get out of here, all right, it makes you happy. And that's the thing about the Lord is that we're going to get out of what really troubles and ails us, what really hurts us. And so hope is where we begin. <clears throat> and so then that brings a sense of peace, peace. When you know that you have a future, when you know that you're okay, when you know that God is going to take care of you, makes you settle down a bit, you know. Um, I remind myself on a regular basis that God exists and that he cares about me because I can get really jacked up on very little stuff. Amen? And so, you know, when you have hope, like, for instance, the cat in a hat deal, you know, the idea, you know, mom's home and everything's all messed up. And so, you know, they're all going to get caught and get in trouble, you know, so that doesn't make them happy. And so the cat in a hat deal is the fact that he cleans everything up before mom even comes through the door. But the bottom line is, is that for you and I, it gives us a great deal of peace when we have hope. And no matter what, this is all going to get fixed and cleaned up. And it makes a big difference, huge difference. And then that peace actually leads to joy. You get out of there. You, 
you actually have this, this amazing presence and power and wonder in your life. And it, and it makes you happy. Okay? <clears throat> now, be careful about turning God into a gumball machine. You know what a gumball machine is? It's a machine that you put money in it and you get what? Yeah. You put more money now than you used to and you get a smaller gumball. Okay. So inflation is definitely even affecting the gumball machine. But the reality for you and I is that that's not the way it is with God. Uh, we were at Aldi's Friday. And before we got there, Pam is looking for her quarter. You know. Now, I took the cart back. And I don't want the quarter. Why? I want to give it to somebody else, you see. You know, and what a nice thing it is to come up and find a cart that's already quartered up. Amen? Now, it's just a quarter, you know, but it's just nice to know and it makes you happy. It makes you happy. Now, think of it the other way. You get up there and you find out you didn't even know you had to have a quarter. You can't get the stupid cart out. Now you got to go to your car. And maybe there's a quarter in the car. Maybe there's not. And you get over there and there's no quarter. Now you're standing there, you know, quarterless, <laughs> cartless. You're not going to go get your goodies that you want there in Aldi's, you know. You get a box. Is that what you do? Yeah. You go on in with a box. Now here's what I do, okay. I never get a cart when I go in. And then three-fourths of the way through the store, guess what? I need a cart. I do that all the time. I'm hopeless. Anyway, the bottom line is hope, peace, joy. But today is actually love. Love. Now, sometimes I think uh, we fellas have a tendency to maybe kind of take ourselves out of some of these fruits of the Spirit somewhat, you know. I mean, we're kind of task-oriented uh, we're kind of accomplishment, you know, so on and so forth. But look, man, I'm going to tell you right now, not any of us here would be okay without love. If a child does not experience love, it'll grow up with no conscience. If a child does not experience love, It'll grow up having a hard time attaching to anyone. Within a very short period of time, if that child does not know that somebody cares about it, that child will die. The Russians proved this when they tried to raise all these children without touching them. And children actually what? Died. And so, you know, and in a, in a society where there is very little love, there's a lot less love than there used to be. The reality is, is that we have a lot of people that have no ability to bond or relate. Or, and so that's a very sad existence. And so love is very important. And fellas, don't, let's not remove ourselves from that area because we need it too. We need it too. So I thought it'd be good, you know, just Advent. It means the coming of Christ. So Advent, you know, it, the coming of Christ or the second coming. And don't forget, Jesus came, but he's coming again. And he is the second Adam, okay? He's the one that came and did it right. Whereas the first Adam came and did it what? Yeah, got on the naughty list. Okay, caught doing bad, just like us, amen. So, Jesus coming, and then the second coming. So, the period leading up to Christmas is known as Advent. It is the first season of the church year, of the Christian church year, if you're going with liturgical worship. On each four Sundays preceding Christmas, an Advent candle is lit. The four candles of the Advents, names are hope, joy, peace, love, Representing the virtues 
that Jesus brought us, that his birth, that his coming, that God's presence and God's work in this world in our lives brings. And so that's why it's really a good thing to actually be a part of it. Now, I wanted you to also realize that there's another way to kind of view this a little bit, and that is to see the candles according to what's actually being accomplished with each one or, or in the reality of Christ's coming. So one is prophecy. Prophecy. Can you tell me where you will be in one hour from now? Exactly. Yeah. You think you can. I know I can. Okay. All I got to do is call 911 and I'll change your life forever. <laughs> okay. So, you know, <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, them warrants are going to catch up with you, kid. So, the reality is, is that you and I don't have control and cannot say absolutely with certainty anything. Okay? But God didn't just come. He said he was coming. He said exactly how, when, where, and under what circumstances. And then it all happened. It's called prophecy. It's called prophecy. And then the angel candle announcing that the Prince of Peace, that peace on earth, has come. And yet the governments didn't change. The economies didn't change. You see? Jesus is the Prince of Peace beyond any actual nation or government. Peace of the heart. Peace of the mind and soul. To be solved. And then the shepherd's candle. The shepherd's candle. These fellas gals who are mostly ostracized in their society, not considered to be, you know, on the high side, more on the low side because of the work and the nature of their work and so on and so forth, not able to observe religious things that they would actually say. They're the ones that got the announcement. And they go and actually witness. They actually witness the advent of this God born in human flesh. And when they got there, they were happy because what they were told was true and they were told. They were told. And then the Bethlehem candle, the Bethlehem candle, the idea that, that God loves everybody, doesn't matter who you are. Now, if you were going to have a king born, where would you have that king born? Amazonia? I watched a YouTube video, the top 10 small towns of Missouri, the smallest towns of Missouri. Three towns in Missouri have zero population. Okay, the highest they went up to is eight. And this guy goes and tells you about that town and so on and so forth. I was kind of wondering, who did he talk to on the zeros? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, it was kind of interesting. But again, these are towns. These are actual towns in Missouri recognized by the state of Missouri and all the entities and realities that come with that. Bethlehem is low on the totem pole. And yet is the place where God chose to bring forth the salvation of the world. God loves everybody, no matter who you are. Even if you're a zero. Amen? Amen. And so I want you to think about this, and as we, we consider this, I want you to know that salvation is everywhere, that it, you can see the advent, every element of the advent, actually, every element of Christ in all of, of the New Testament, all of the Old Testament. But notice what it, what it actually says. In Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified, sorry, I got a little... I'm a little ADHD, you know what I'm saying? Huh? Anybody feel my pain? Anybody feel Pam's pain? <laughs> my family's pain? Yeah, I'm way down the road before they ever get started. So, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, 
we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And it's important to know, you know, uh, the Bible uses several different words for the word love, but it also uses them because of the different languages that the Bible is actually written in. And so, you know, these are the words Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And one of the most mysterious, of course, is the Greek word agape for love because it's so unique in its fullness and expression, and that Jesus Christ literally, uh, as his teaching and living, uh, gave rise to a love that, that was hard to even understand and to give language to. But the Bible really clearly tells us that love is a center, that it is the culmination, it is the completion, it is the, the full definition of who God is and what God does. When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He was told, and he told, love, come with me, the Lord your God with all your, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think we can just sum it up, love him with everything, everything. And if you have that, because you can't go talking about the love of God without actually talking about loving people. Okay? Can you imagine cherry mash without chocolate or without cherry? No. It makes no sense, you see. And so to talk about God without love and without understanding that loving others is the fullness of because you see, love is not, not just a, a reality, it's an action. And that if you got God, then you're going to love people. If you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, you're going to love people. Now, I, I want you to understand this because agape love is different. It's different. So, before we move on too much... Let me just ask you a question, and don't jump too quickly, okay? But do you really love people? <laughs> yeah, Holly, so that's honest. Some of them, yeah. In ourselves, we only have the ability to love some people. And the Bible says we have a tendency to love those who love us back. So imagine taking these cookies out, some people, and you hand them the cookies, and you worked hard, you got the chocolate chips, you know, you perfectly put them in there, and you got 13 chips for every cookie, you know. I don't know if that's your ratio, but that's definitely mine. <laughs> and they got sugar in there, you know, with not too much salt and all that kind of stuff. And you give these your cookies to people, and you say, here, here's, love you. And what do they do? They throw it in your face. Tell you, stick your cookies where the sun don't shine. Still want to give them the cookies? <laughs> now, in our flesh, in ourselves, we will not want to give those people cookies. So let's, let's take a look at what the Bible actually defines as love. For God so loved the world that he, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Now, I know you mamas here would struggle deeply even just to let me hold your kid let alone know that 
giving it to me would be a sacrifice of that kid forever for people that don't even like you. So I want us to be clear about what this love is. It's powerful stuff. And remember, we are not going to make it without love. It's not going to happen. So this hope and this peace and this joy all comes out of the reality of love. And next Sunday and on Christmas Eve, we will light the Christ candle because what we're actually describing is Jesus. Who loves us in spite of ourselves. In spite of ourselves. Notice the cross reference at the bottom of this red letter edition Bible of John 3.16. What's the first cross reference you see there in black? Romans 5.8. And what does Romans 5.8 say? But God shows his love for us in that while we were still, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. There was a time in my life where I did not believe in God. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, like I was just happy-go-lucky. I, I did not believe. If you asked me, I would have given you an evolution dogma. I learned it at the Denver Museum of Natural Arts and History. I would walk case by case as a kid, cut off jeans, t-shirt, barefoot, sneaking in because I didn't have the money. I'd go in there and I'd look at them cases and I'd see the pool of goo that's supposed to be you and me, amen? And out of that goo would come some kind of blob and then eventually that blob would be standing sort of like this and look a lot like what was at the zoo, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but anyway, that's what I believed. And then God encountered me and showed me that he existed and that he loves me. Changed me forever. That's not like that for everybody, as in, it doesn't happen like that, you know. But somehow or another, you come to know that God loves you and you allow him into your life and to allow that love to fix you. And he did it while I was still a sinner. Now I'm telling you right now, if I put a scrolling of my sins on that screen for everybody to see, I would not want to be here when you see it. Well, how about this? I'll put yours up there, and they'll be scrolling. And we'll have video, live video. <laughs> I mean, we're, you know, and that's the, just the stuff you remember, let alone what you've forgotten. And all I want you to know is this. God loves you with all of it. All of it. Doesn't that feel good? So I want us to be reminded today that this is a true gift, and it is the gift of love, and it is God's actual determination to love us and to be in our lives and to save our souls and to give us what we cannot get without him. Now I'm going to tell you right now, there's no sex no drug, no money, no position, nothing will do that in your life. Only your creator, back in his rightful position, can actually solve you. And so, 
I want us to stand and sing this song. And it's not going to, it's not really like a Christmas song, but it is. Because the birth of Christ is the greatest expression of love that has ever been done in a birth. Would you stand with me? And sing this with me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. And someday his face I'll see. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And my friends, because of that, we want to tell other people where the bread is with butter and garlic on it. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. It's the bread of life. As we sing, you decide about your life.